Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how I did this awesome VFX shot. Let's check out. As you know, 90% of VFX shots are consist of three main steps. First, 3D tracking, second, rotoscopy, and third, adding or compositing a VFX element. For this particular shot, we are going step by step. So let's get into After Effects. So first, duplicate the footage, then on top one, mask the moving subject by pen tool and set it to inverted. We have to cover the subject in black to avoid any further tracking issues. For now, I just turn off it. After that, track the mask path. You can go frame by frame or you can do a track mask. Adjust the track where it needs. We have to cover the subject in black. After tracking the mask, pre-comp the footage and rename it as mask. Now on the mask layer, we apply 3D tracker. I use FX console from Video Copilot to apply it. You can do an FX panel on 3D tracker. Go to the advanced option and check detail analysis. This is give you a better result. Now wait for finish this track. Now it's done. Tracking time is depend on your resolution that you're working in and frame rate. After you're done with tracking, select the points. I choose a bunch of them from middle. Then right click and create create solid and camera. Then I adjust the plane to match the front wall in the footage. For this shot, this is a good reference. To see better, you can apply the grid effect. This is good for referencing. I also created another plane for a crown. You can do as same as previous plane, but at this time we have to create horizontal plane for ground. And the rest is the same. Check preview and adjust it. For normalization of 3D scene, I use a script called Normalize 3D. It's a great script. I give you a link to the description to download it. To know more about normalizing 3D scenes, check out a video about normalizing 3D. Then go to the mask precomp layer. On the mask properties, select none. Now we are going to do a rotoscoping session. So let's ready. To rotoscope this character, select the layer below the mask layer. Then go to the roto brush and select it. Double click the footage. Now you see there is another panel open here. Let's wide open that panel. Now you can see on your mouse cursor, there is a green dot or circle, which is a roto brush. By default, it's switched to green. To increase or decrease the size of brush, you can use Ctrl and left click drag. To select the areas, to deselect any part, you can click Alt, drag your mouse with the left click. Next, selecting the character. To select your character, make outline over it by roto brush, like this. Then it automatically selects the character. If it's exceeding the boundaries, then you can do Alt, drag over it. One quick tip is, you have to be in full resolution while rotoscoping. It gives the best results. Normally After Effects rotoscope can skip 10 frames at a time. But in this case, we go frame by frame. To go one frame forward, press page down button on your keyboard. For backward, it's page up. I do this thing frame by frame. 
It takes time but results are satisfying. After you're done with the rotoscoping, click the freeze button below. Basically, it locks your selections. After done freezing, you can check the alpha by clicking this icon. Now close the rotor panel and let's back to our comp. To see our rotor character, hide the upper layer. Now you can see the rotor is rock hard. Now we have completed two important steps. First is 3D tracking and second is rotoscoping. Now the third important stage is applying VFX elements. First precompose roto layer and name it main shot. Now I have to include some glitch assets to my composition. To download these assets, check out the link in description below. Now place these assets below the main shot. Now clean up the workspace a little bit. At this way, you can see the glitch wall is behind the character. Remember the reference wall we have created? We have to copy the orientation and the position value from that wall to our glitch assets in 3D space. We have to copy the parameter from reference wall then paste it to our glitch layer. Make sure you convert glitch layers into 3D. Copy the position and orientation values from wall layer to the glitch layer. You can click on parameters and control C to copy and go to the main glitch wall and on the same parameter press control V. After setting a position of glitch layer, you can adjust it in 3D space. I have many assets to download. You can go in the description and download it. I include many glitch effects into this. Every time you include any glitch asset, convert it into 3D and do the same thing with the position and orientation. Copy paste and adjust. And one important note, after you place all those elements, you also have to move those in Z space. If you are on the same position then other assets are not visible. So adjust it in Z space and turn their blending mode to add. Make sure your layer blending mode is set it to add except the last one to make the wall black. I import different glitch effects into the center position. Set a right time to set your glitch effects. Like in this shot, the character is opening the barrier. So I place the circle glitch effect at its main point. Because I'm working in laptop, it's hard to handle heavy files. So I just select them all and place it below and hide it. To work with less heavy files, I export glitch effects of this comp separately. Now it's a single file, that's why it's easy to handle. Now I just import rendered glitch footage and place it below the main comp. Right now we really don't need to 3D track this because it already tracked and exported. On original project, I used alpha matte technique to dissolve the character into the wall. But it's time consuming and it's a quick tutorial. For now, I just do it in a traditional way by masking it. Select the main shot and draw a mask over it and set it to subtract. To animate a mask path, go to the mask path properties and click the time icon to animate it. And to the end, adjust the mask and shrink it down. At the end, you can remove it from the frame. Now your effect is done. Go to the feather properties by pressing F on the keyboard and adjust it as your way. By clicking F on the keyboard, you can include as many as stock footage in it, sparks, 
fire anything you can add it in this shot and make it better on the main footage you can add curves effect to color correct it and on glitch effects you can add glow to add more effect in this tutorial I just give you an overview of main project because main project is about six to seven days of work so it's difficult to complete detailed in one video and also this is my first tutorial video so I have to learn many things it's about feedback so please keep supporting me guys for new and awesome content so I will meet you guys in the next video subscribe to my channel till then stay healthy stay safe and be awesome